Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth be spirit-led, be clear and edifying, feeding your people the good news of Christ's kept promise of dying for our sins and reopening paradise. And may the listening of the people's ears be attentive and eager to hear the encouraging news that Jesus is indeed the way, the truth, and the life. There's so much disappointment in other things, but your word tells us, your witness of your word tells us that you have met and exceeded all of our expectations. Forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. Grant this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, I'm disappointed. You know those candles I put on the kids' cupcakes? I went to three stores yesterday. Cover your ears. You know what I'm going to say. And I found, maybe four, and I finally found what I wanted. They're called magic candles. You guys, you just, you just have too much breath. <laughs> I think what the boys did, they blew so hard, they just blew the thing right off. But they're supposed to relight. And I was disappointed. And hers we lit, but not yours. So it kind of spoiled it. There's my introduction. How's that? <laughs> so you understand disappointment. You understand disappointment. It might be something as little as that, but it was well, adults. Some of them are pretty big disappointments. You rent a car. You expect it to be clean, right? You, sp you spend $140 for a hotel room at night for a motel room. You expect the sheets to be clean hmm? what else more serious you're before lords the lord's altar with whom you with your girlfriend and you uh, become man and wife and you expect the relationship to last and your spouse to be faithful and it doesn't happen you go to the doctor you take care of yourself you eat right you exercise you live a modest lifestyle and the doctor says, you're really sick. You're disappointed. Disappointment permeates our life in little ways and big ways. You could call this world a world of disappointment. Wouldn't it be awful if God disappointed us? Wouldn't it be awful if God, who says he's God and can do all these things, couldn't keep his promises. Our text for today talks about expectations. It talks about John the Baptist's expectation of the Lord Jesus. It talks about the Lord Jesus' expectation of John the Baptist. And it talks about the expectations of this generation of people towards the Lord Jesus, which is a mixed bag. And my hope in this sermon, I'll say it now, with the power of the Holy Spirit, I hope I can generate a truer and deeper confidence and comfort that the Lord God meets and exceeds all your expectations, especially your expectation about removing what keeps you from paradise. That's what I, I think that's a good name for heaven, paradise. Because human be beings started out in paradise, called the Garden of, Mr. Smarty Pants, Garden of, thank you, okay, closed because of sin at the cross of Calvary, the Garden, the Paradise, reopened. So I'd like to do this as a rather long text, and I'll do the best I can uh, by c uh, putting it down, it, uh, the, uh, the uh, gospel text falls into three portions. So I'm going to read one portion, make some comments on it, all of which hopefully will lead us to set aside our disappointment and comfort. I say confidence, but comfort that Jesus comes through, that Jesus comes through. Okay, so rereading verse 18, section 1. John's disciples told him about all these things. What things? The the, he, the raising of the dead of the widow's son and all these other miracles that Jesus was doing. 
Calling two of them, the Baptist sent him to the Lord Jesus to ask, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask. Some think that John the Baptist didn't ask for himself because he was a pillar in the faith, but he asked for his own disciples. Regardless, the question comes out of the Baptist's mouth and is a frank, honest question, which his disciples repeat in the presence of Jesus. Are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? That happens to you and me sometimes. There, there aren't many John the Baptists around anymore. There are some pillars in the faith. Um, St. Paul, um, Luther, when he stood up to the church that it needed ref reforming and others. So I'm in that camp where like, is, it, is Jesus, are you the one? Is there, an, is, there, is there another avatar out there? Couldn't money do what you're doing? Right? Couldn't technology do what you're doing? Couldn't human education and intelligence provide more than what you're doing? And I ask the same question, and so do you. So the Baptist is asking the question for you and for me, an honest, straightforward question. At that very time, Jesus, that's an odd expression, isn't it? At the very time, it seems to me it's like he was, he was doing miracles when the question was being asked, but of course it means in the, in the, about the same time, and we just, we just recounted a miracle that he did. Jesus was doing what? Curing many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. That's big. That's big. Some of you have vision problems right now. And even 21st century modern medicine can only do so much. You can't, you can't read the hymns. You can't serve as lector. Hmm? You, you can't hardly watch TV. And Jesus, okay, that's one of them. So he replied to the messengers in an honest, direct way. An honest question deserves an honest answer. Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. What he was seen and heard. What he was doing right then. All these wonderful things. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. And then the Lord Jesus ask, or adds this benediction. If you're one of those people who can see God in what Jesus is doing, and Jesus is doing kind stuff. I mean, he's not building an empire for himself. He's not, he's not like Midas turning everything into gold. He's not uh, elevating himself as a powerful political figure. Hmm? He's not doing, he's doing the stuff you'd want to do if you could. My hunch is if those red buckets of the Salvation Army, if you could, you'd put in a hundred bucks throughout the season, four, five, six times. But you can't do that. But Jesus can. He reaches out and he does this stuff and he commands those with this benediction, blessed is the person who does not fall away on account of me. Do you see the same things that Jesus is? Do you see the same things that the, that the Baptist heard about and the disciples of the Baptist and others saw that Jesus does wonderful people, does wonderful things for people who have deep needs? Happy are you. Happy are you. That's comfort for you and confidence for you. Section 2 starts with verse 24. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the expectations, the expectations of Jesus are met in what he does. Okay, now expectations about John. All right, verse 24, after John's messengers left, Jesus began to, to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? Hmm? A popular preacher? Somebody with a wishy-washy message? A uh, well-paid speaker? Or did you go out to see someone talk about God's word and God's way? A reed swayed by the wind? No. If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see and hear? Why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? 
I pray that for, amongst other reasons, right there at the top is you want to hear God's word, whether it's judgment towards sin or forgiveness, forgiveness and mercy of God that those have been washed away like a dry erase board. Hmm, some of that spray, I mean, you didn't even spray, you just need an eraser. But it, that, that non-permanent stuff is permanent sometimes. You have to spray it, your teachers know what I'm talking about, and it's clean like a brand new board. Okay, is that what you come to hear? And you are okay with God. A prophet, yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, yet the one who is least, I always thought this was children or tax collectors or prostitutes, one who is least, but it says the one. Who's the one who is the most humble, the most serving in the kingdom of God? It's the Lord Jesus. It's the Lord Jesus, the suffering servant kingdom of God. He is greater even than this great prophet, John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Someone has said that this story is about expectations, but it's about ministries. The ministry of John the Baptist is in your face. You brood of vipers, we talked about that. Who warned you to who warned you to flee the wrath which is coming? You're all a bunch of jerks. He said that. He says it to me. He says it to me. The mission of John the Baptist is confrontation about sin. The, he does it. He meets the expectations. He gets people to see themselves as they really are and to metanoia. Say, you're right. I do cheat people. Turn around. The mission of Jesus is equally legitimate. The the mission of Jesus is to bring forgiveness. Can, can you handle that? You know, I was thinking last night as I was going over this message is, is I'm your I, I, M pastor. Now just work with me for a minute, okay? I'm here only for this long. Mm -hmm. The real pastor, that's, I don't like that phrase. <laughs> I, did, I did one of these in Blythe. Uh, at Zion Blythe, and um, people start come start saying they were they were cute about it. They said, "When do we get a real pastor?" <laughs> I oh thanks. <laughs> okay, I'm here for this short a time. Your real pastor comes in about a year. Okay, what's my job? My job is to. To, for us together to look at things that will prevent the real pastor who's going to be here for 80 years. You ready for that? You better like him. Okay, to grow the church. So my job is kind of like a forerunner to take a look at those things which need to be resolved so that he's not stopped, stalled coming out of the gate. So I might be in your face. I did that this week. N not to you. Now, what s says here stays here, okay? I, I felt Grace Church was being ignored a little bit by the, uh, the hierarchy. So I got on the phone and called two people. I thought I was being ignored too. I don't get any announcements, emails about, about uh, the church at large business. And I said, what's going on here? Don't we count? Boy, that was like walking into a buzzsaw. <laughs> but it had to be corrected. It had to be corrected. You and I are partners in the gospel just as the people in San Diego and Yuma and Phoenix. So my mission well might be to get in your face. There are a few things which we need to address so that when the ministry of building the church is here comes the real pastor he can go all stops pulled all stops pulled can you embrace that kind of ministry or i say you know there's too much smart talk here why do you guys run each other into the ground why don't you build each other up 
Um, have you ever thought about John the Baptist, IIM might say, have you looked at your style? Hmm? We're not growing. Is it the style? Maybe we need to abandon an old-fashioned style and put on a new style. That doesn't change Jesus and the cross. And you don't like that because you like the way things have been done before. But both ministries are effective and the Baptist exceeded the expectations of drawing people to repentance and Jesus exceeds the expectation of bringing good news. Section 3, the final one, verse 29. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they did not, had not been baptized by John. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? So now we're talking about the expectations of people to Jesus. What do people expect Jesus to be? What do you expect Jesus to be? And is he meeting your expectations or are you disappointed? Or perhaps, just perhaps, are your expectations a little goofy? We have a Honda. Every time I go to the Honda, I get pretty good service, high prices, good service, a shuttle, and a car wash. That's pretty good, okay? A week ago yesterday, I took my Honda to El Centro Honda. Same thing, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da. It was okay. And I said, can I have a shuttle ride back? Uh, we offer shuttle, but not on Saturday. It was Saturday. Okay. So I came home, watched the parade, went back, da-da-da-da-da, got my car, okay, good service, high prices, everything's attacked, no shuttle service. And I said, don't you offer car wash? Yes, but not on Saturday. <laughs> not on Saturday. Those are my expectations of Honda. Okay, it's what are your expectations? What's the world's expectation? Why do so many people of this generation, of Christ, of Jesus and the Baptist generation, turn Jesus down? Turn Jesus down. Because they don't feel like they need forgiveness? Maybe not. Some people don't believe they do anything wrong. Some people have no, have, don't believe in the doctrine of sin. Some people don't believe in the doctrine of God. You're your own God. You're not that way. Thanks be to God that your expectation of Jesus is you need God and you need forgiveness and you have a deep hope that there's a better life, which there is because we're not in paradise where we belong. What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. Mm, we didn't like John's ministry. We sang a dirge and you did not cry. And like Jesus' ministry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine and you say he is a demon. Critic criticize, criticize. The Son of Man came eating and drinking like you wanted the Baptist to do and you said he's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Last verse, but wisdom is proved right by all her children. Dear friends, there's a lot of disappointment in life. There's a lot of disappointment in religion. But if Jesus is in your religion, he does not disappoint. Be wise and embrace what John's message can do for you, repentance, and especially what the Lord Jesus' ministry can do for you. His death on the cross reopens paradise. Comfort, I hope. I hope. Confidence, I hope. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.